Let's turn our attention now to some economic matters, particularly in relation to governance. Joining us is the one of one of the members of the Parliamentary Committee for Corporations and Financial Services, Deb O'Neill. Deb, thanks so much for your time. I want to ask you about this breaking news from Austrac applying for civil penalties against Westpac. And we're talking about an extraordinary number of breaches of anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism uh, laws. 23 million occasions have they been deemed to contravene those particular uh, laws by Austrac. Mm. This is extraordinary. It, it is. It's, it's really shocking. Um, and, you know, it's coming in the the shadow of the Royal Commission into banking and financial services and we're at a period of time where we were hoping to be rebuilding trust in our major institutions. But these sorts of breaches occur when no one is watching and when systems are not properly invested in. You know, it, it's okay to make a profit. There's nothing wrong with that. It's great to be a business making uh, profit for you or yourself and your shareholders. But you have to put the systems in place to comply with the law. To break the law on 23 million occasions is simply outrageous. And uh, people have a right to be very concerned about what's going on. I think part of this is um, the shift from some of the big banks, certainly the four big banks, to reduce their workforce. And in doing so, they lose highly skilled people. So then they start getting consultancies in. And we've, we've talked about audit and we'll talk about it yeah. again. But when you bring in people for short-term contracts, how deeply are they invested in doing good work over a long period of time, providing the proper surveillance and care to make sure that the law is complied with by some of our biggest institutions? It's you know, a very similar issue even to wage theft. And we've heard if, if you can't get that right, if you can't get your systems right, what are you doing? Mm. And we should make the point that this is being brought against Westpac and the Federal Court. They haven't been found wanting yet in a court, but it is uh, an extraordinary move by Austrac. Are you surprised just that figure that Kira mentioned, 23 million potential breaches? Look, the scale is quite shocking. Um, and, and with regard to, you know, the scale of the big banks failing, yesterday we heard in our ASIC oversight hearing that there's $10 billion set aside to return money to Australians who've been ripped off. This is already done and dusted. It's, it's, it's agreed that Australians missed out in money on three things. Consumer credit insurance, um, add-on insurance in car yards and fees for no service. So yes, they've agreed. $10 billion sitting there. It's been sitting there now for some years. And only $660 million has gone out. That's 7%. 7% of the money that is rightly owed to Australians who've been ripped off by the banks, and that, that's all they've got. ASIC yesterday raised serious concerns about the tardiness of this. Uh, they said they're seeking direction powers. They're, they're waiting. They're waiting for the government to bring the legislation on and give them the directions powers they can this, to push ahead with this. This development, though, as well, undermines potentially, if, if proven uh, in the court, undermines police investigations about the origins of, of finance. And, yes. Uh, so not only does it affect the consumer, it affects, obviously, the governance, not just of the, the, the banking nation. system, but the nation. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I think that what we're seeing is a, a moment uh, in history where we're starting to understand that these big corporations that we rely on, the banks, are a critical part of the society at large. They're not just a business. They actually have not only fiduciary obligations, but social and political mm. obligations yep. to abide by the law. They're not bigger than the law, and they need to make sure that they invest in systems and invest in people and pay people fair wages in the work that they do and keep them employed so that they have the skills and talents. Because where, these, where people are missing, Quality is compromised. We need good people with great brains doing good work and we need good systems in place. Now, if we move on to your audit inquiry that you're a part of here in Parliament, there's been some pretty shocking developments in that space, including that ASIC, looking at the audits that have been taking place in Australia, found a quarter of them didn't have enough evidence to be giving the opinion that they were giving. Exactly. That's fundamentally their job though, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, well, and, and that is the case. You know, auditors are supposed to exercise what's called professional scepticism. Um, you perhaps would want it in your best friend all the time. Is that true? Is that true? But that's exactly what you want in your auditor. And you particularly want it with regard to getting the numbers right. 
the, the problem uh, ASIC have diagnosed and have been going on about now for seven years in the time that I've been on the committee is that the failure rate of material misstatement is 24% and this year it went up to 25%. Uh, in their most recent data that they were able to provide. You're talking yesterday. about the big four audit The big firms. four, they do... Well, Is the this big, what you're covering? The big four do 95% of the work, OK? So there are a couple of others who do small amounts. So taking that on board, yes, the big four, Ernst & Young, Deloitte, KPMG and... PwC. PwC, four of them. Um, overall, when you average it all out, we ended up with about 20% as, a, as an ongoing problem. But the reality is, you know, it's pretty bad if you go in on a risk sample, risk-based sample, you look because you're a little concerned and you find, well, yeah, we're right, and 25% of them lack evidence to back up the work that they've done because you're supposed to prove mm. what you find, whether you find positively or negatively, you're supposed to prove it. The evidence is missing. Mm. So that, that, that simply isn't good enough. And I think it does go to the sense of how seriously do the big banks take their responsibility to have systems in place? How seriously are they doing the good work in-house? Mm. How skilled and talented and retained are their staff I to do this ongoing work? That's kind of two separate issues though, but if we just focus on the big four and the audit firms, yeah. what's the solution though? Because you can't have ASIC audit every audit, that's impossible. If you get other firms to audit each other, that's just a cash cow for the big four firms. What, what do you do to ensure that the quality is there? Well, I, I do believe that it's actually a lot to do with the staffing, which is why I keep bringing it up. The, the staffing in um, the four big banks is, is important to make sure that the quality of the work that they do the, the, is good. The, these big four firms don't just audit banks, they audit No, everything. that's true. And, and we're, we're talking about billions and billions also, of dollars of the economy. <laughs> I wouldn't be complaining about a bank salary. A I jobs. would be complaining about a big four salary, though. Yeah, there have been a lot of banks, though, that have dismissed staff. And when you do that, systems start to begin to fail. So that's one of the things... It's not just up to ASIC to sort this out. The banks themselves and other big companies need to make sure that they have systems in place and people, sufficient people to do the right work to make sure that they're abiding by the law. When audit, auditors come in, they can't be so contained by timesheets and limitations put on them by their employers that they can't actually do the work that they're supposed to do. They have to act as a professional, not just, it's not just an employee-employer relationship. Yeah. They have responsibilities where they have considerable power yeah. that controls the, uh, the uh, information that flows into the economy to make people possible, uh, sorry, to make it possible for people to get the right information before they invest billions of dollars. Deborah Neil, thanks so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. A quick